Hello guys, Matthew here and welcome back again to the Tactic YouTube channel. Yes, it's finally here, Intel's new KB Lake platform CPU lineup, the 7th generation of Core series dubbed as 7000 series, and here in front of me I have the top representative of that lineup, the Core i7-7700K. The KB Lake platform is a direct successor to the Skylake series, although they aren't so different from each other. The manufacturing process is the same, 14 nanometers, while Intel also didn't tamper with architecture itself, so basically no IPC improvements or new instruction sets. What Intel did with KB Lake CPU is polish their existing process technology, making it a part of their new TikTok optimized sequence. That's why you see that the new Core i7-7700K runs at 4.2 GHz of base clock and can go up to 4.5 GHz of boost clock, which is 300 MHz more compared to the Core i7-6700K. Other than that, this is still a 4-core 8-thread 91W TDP CPU with the same power consumption as its predecessor, carrying 8 megabytes of cache and supporting DDR4 RAM. The only thing that's actually new is support for the hardware video acceleration of the HEVC H.265 codec, which now runs with the help of the upgraded media engine on the graphics core part. Although KB Lake platform is fully supported by the current generation of motherboards, ones like Z170, H170 and other chipsets from that Skylake generation, Intel decided to introduce us with a new generation of chipsets, which basically have the same naming, but with a higher first number, so Z270, H270 and so on. On that note, beside the new CPU, I also had a new Z270 chipset based motherboard from MSI, the Z270 Gaming Pro Carbon model, and you can check out my detailed overview of it in a separate video. I'll put a link to that in the right top corner of this video and in the description box down below. Bottom line, this generation of chipsets don't actually bring that much new features to the table compared to the previous generation, most noticeable one being that it has more PCI lanes, 24 instead of 20, and with that we are also getting Intel Obtain memory support, about which we still don't know that much, but I will definitely check it out up close and personal once it finally comes out. The CPU itself looks to have a bit of a different heat spreader design, but other than that you can just pop it into the Z270 motherboard and its 1151 socket or Z170 motherboard with appropriate BIOS update and you're ready to go. Of course the same goes for the rest of the chipset lineup, being it for KB Lake or Skylake platform, but you can also have an opposite scenario with putting a Skylake CPU into a KB Lake chipset based motherboard. Finally, it was time to start out the new KB Lake configuration, which I built for the purpose of this testing in the NZXT's S340 LE chassis. Leaving everything at stock settings, as you can see it here by looking at these test results and graphs, the Core i7-7700K has a clear advantage over the Core i7-6700K, but that's solely on the clock difference, which is basically around 200 to 300 megahertz, so it's not a surprise that it will be better than it in terms of the performance. Overclocking the Core i7-6700K k to 4.6 gigahertz and leveling off the core i7 7700k to the same frequency you can see that they are basically neck and neck performance wise with a margin of a measurement error proving once again that there is no ipc performance gain with kb lake architecture
speaking of the overclocking, one thing that sets it apart from its predecessor is definitely its ability to clock really high. It seems that the refinement of the manufacturing process and the CPU die itself resulted in Intel getting a greater quality of their yields, which in the end made it a bit more potent when it comes to overclocking. I was able to hit 5.0 GHz rock stable with basically the same stock voltage, just a bit more than that, but be sure to get a decent cooling as the cores can easily get to the 90 degrees Celsius mark. I'll do a how-to overclocking video guide for the Core i7-7700K soon, so be sure to stay tuned for that. Since I've already touched the topic of temperatures, it seems that the KB Lake's Core i7-7700K runs a bit hotter compared to the Sky Lake's Core i7-6700K. The default core voltage is pretty high, hitting up to 1.35 volts on stock clocks and settings, so that's probably one of the main reasons why the temperatures are up there. I assume they probably needed to bump it up a bit to get to those higher bass and boost frequencies, but it still seems to be way too high for what's really needed, while on the other hand that could also depend on the motherboard manufacturers and their BIOS settings for default voltages. Bottom line, there's definitely some room for undervolting and lower temperatures. I think that anywhere from 1.3 to 1.32 volts should suffice, and I've already saw some other reviewers confirming my theory. One more thing, although Intel claims that only one core should boost up to 4.5 GHz, I was basically seeing all of them go to that frequency and firmly staying there, while the boost technology seems to be a bit more quicker to respond and more active overall. Right off the bat I'm going to say that I didn't fully benchmark KB Lake's new integrated HD630 graphics portion, but I've instead just briefly checked how it performs in games and in some synthetic benchmarks. The main reason for that is that bottom line it all comes down to the fact that this is basically a rebrand of the existing HD530 graphics of the Core i7-6700K. Yes, it's marginally better than its predecessor, but that's due to higher sustained GPU clock speeds, which came as an update of the existing process technology for the KB Lake, while architecturally speaking there were no major changes, it still has 24 execution units and clocks up to 1150 MHz. On the other hand, I did a couple of benchmarks using a dedicated MSI's GTX 1070 Gaming X model to see how it performs in those four scenarios, does a card like that benefits at all from new KB Lake CPU? By the looks of it, no, no it doesn't, maybe by a small margin in the best case scenario. I even did my testing at 1080p resolution, so I can record higher frame rates and more precisely pinpoint the difference, but overall if you're planning to upgrade from Skylake or even Haswell platform, I don't think it will pay off for my majority of users, especially in terms of gaming rigs. All in all, KB Lake launch seems to be a bit underwhelming, but that for the most part falls onto Intel's end, as they are the one who set and chased the original TikTok release schedule for all those years, so expectations were always set high. This somewhat reminds me a bit of Devil's Canyon launch in a way, but at the end of the day there are a few positive things surrounding it, from higher overclocking potential, some feature improvements of the chip's graphical and media portion, as well as the slight chipset refresh, all of it again being bundled at the same price point as its predecessor. Yes, I've also expected more out of it, we all did, but with already seeing all of those early previews and reviews which started to surface out, I kinda went numb after a while on KB Lake, which now in the end when I finally tried it out for myself, resulted in strengthening my meh conclusion about it. Now I'm, and as you are probably too, more focused on seeing what will aim this Ryzen CPU platform bring to the table, it's definitely exciting year in front of us, although I'm hoping to in the meantime try out the rest of the KB Lake CPU lineup, especially the unlocked Core i3-7350K and maybe even a notebook or two and their mobile counterparts.
That's it guys for this time from me. Thank you once again for checking out my review of Intel's Core i7-7700K CPU. Feel free to toss me a thumbs up if you like this video, that really helps me a lot. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions about the product and of course if you would like to see more content like this, you can subscribe to the Tech Tick YouTube channel or you can just check out some of my other videos from before.